Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Vinod uh, from Diksha Technologies. I'm heading uh, products and services division and the innovation lab in Diksha. Diksha is an 18 year old uh, telecom services and products organization uh, serving all the tier one uh, operators across the globe. So today I'm here to uh, present our uh, flagship product, Smart Invoice Pro, uh, in the area of uh, telecom bill presentation. So to begin with, uh, why uh, an innovation in bill presentment? What are the key pain points in the industry at the moment? So some of the important billing aspects that annoy our end customers are uh, bill shock experience, the jargons being used in the bill, unclear presentation, and uh, probably the invoice not available in the right channel of the choice, lack of personalization, and lack of context. So with Smart Invoice Pro, what we intend to do is transform the painful or the stressful billing experience into an interesting experience, address the pain points in the customer journey, and bring in personalization into the bill and invoicing process, and how do we present the charges, how do we present the information in a much more clear representation on your bill. So keeping this bill pl uh, presentment platform as the core, we have brought in several features where we can improve the customer experience for uh, the end customers and also bring in the operational efficiency for the communication service providers. So here are some of the key interesting stats uh, where we have uh, understood that 68% of the customers say that uh, their bill is very hard to understand. They don't really know what actually is happening on the bill. So I, I think most of us do not even open the bill. I know that I'll be paying 1,000 rupees at the end of the month and I just pay the bill. I don't really get connected to the bill. And most of us will actually think that, okay, bill is always an expense. I don't, deal, I don't really bother. And of course, for a communication service provider, they do spend a lot of money to generate these bills, print the bills, and dispatch to the customers. And beyond this, sometimes this billing could be an annoying experience where you can see that 24% of the customers have a bill shock. I don't expect a thousand rupees bill, but end of the day, yes, I probably receive much more than that. This could be because of several reasons in the whole customer journey process. It could be lack of provisioning, a discount <coughs> expiry, or could be anything else which happens in a complex telecom customer and order fulfillment process. And you can also see that 18% uh, of the customers always feel the first bill is always more than what they expect. Probably they would expect a $10 bill and we end up sending a $50 bill to the end customer. It is probably because the customer has opted much more uh, much more services than what we initially thought or there are some hidden expenses or there could be any other use case which is contributing to a bigger or a much bigger value of uh, your first bill. And we also need uh, the end customers always looking at the personalized attention. So 56% of the customers always think that the bill has to tell them how to save money. I'm having a 599 plan on my bill, and how do I actually save from it? I always spend a 599 or much more than that. But predominantly, it is also possible that they don't spend all the packs, all the freebies, all the voice and data usage that comes along with the plan. So they want a medium where they want uh, the bill or some medium to tell them that, okay, there is a way to save the money, there is a better plan, probably because let's say I'm doing, I'm on an ISD or I'm on an international roaming, and probably I really do not know there is a pack which I need to subscribe for, which will actually save lots of money. So bill is, or invoice is one of the mediums where you can connect with your end customer and tell them that, okay, yes, there are several ways of saving the money, several ways of subscribing to the various packages, and ultimately this leads to uh, better customer experience. And 44% uh, of the customers would like to know where they spend the most and they spend the least. So what they are looking at in, in, in terms of bill, they are looking at analytics. So I want to know whether I have made a lot of usage doing my local calls, my STD calls, my SD calls. So, Bill is one of the mediums for the customer and customer. They want to understand, they want to analyze this bill, but with the standard bills in place, like I have a standard bill, I, I, 
a PDF or a printed paper. I'll not be able to analyze anything. So I have to manually go through each and every line item of my bill, see, okay, this is one of the reasons, probably one of the reasons on why this, uh, 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 on why or where I'm going to spend the most. So keeping all these use cases in place, we have come up uh, uh, with Smart Invoice Pro. Uh, Smart Invoice Pro, as I told, uh, uh, is a customer engagement and bill resentment platform, which produces the bills not just in the traditional PDF or a print ready format, but we also deliver the invoices in many different ways. So moving on to my uh, next slide. Here, uh, I'll be talking about uh, uh, the various features of Smart Invoice Pro and why do we think that uh, is an innovation in this area. So before uh, I move on to my next slide, I would like to play a small video where we have come up with a new concept called uh, the interactive invoice, where the customer make and can make the analysis right into the bill, understand how clearly the charges are laid out, how the analytics can be embedded right into your bill. So, So the interactive PDF here organizes the information across the several tabs, gives the power to the end customer to analyze the bill. Here, the various options, it is all clickable content here. You can analyze the usage of a particular month. You can analyze the type of usage. You can analyze to what destination I have made the call to. I can compare the bill of current months from the previous months or X number of months. I can request for a duplicate bill from any of my previous months, and all these service requests can be raised not to uh, by calling any of uh, the call centers, do not raise any requests, right <coughs> before uh, invoice, the service request can be raised. And there are several other features here. Uh, you will be knowing the plans, you will be knowing what are the current subscribed value added services if you would like to apply more of that, uh, like to subscribe for more services, you can do right through your PDF. So, with Smart Invoice Pro, apart from producing the invoices or the bills, what we intend to offer is uh, the several uh, customer experience improvement methodologies. Now, for example, we uh, do a best fit plan analysis. As we just mentioned, like, uh, we have about 58% of the customers who always think your bill has to be a medium to tell them where they can save. So with the algorithms that are built behind Smart Invoice Pro, what we do is we analyze the trend or the spending pattern, the customer behavioral patterns on the usage spend across several months. And it gives the information about what is the current plan of the customer and what is the most suitable plan the customer can opt for. Beyond this, if the customers, uh, the communication service provider would like to promote certain offers. Okay, forget about the best fit plan. Me as a service provider, I have introduced a new plan called an infinity plan, probably which gives much more better benefits to an end customer. So I would like to promote this new plan through my invoice. So how do I do that? So we just configure Smart Invoice Pro to have this offer details uh, sent to the end customer through several channels, I mean through several channels and several means as well. For example, like uh, uh, I would like to send this particular offer details to a specific set of customers, or let's say specific circles. In our case, let's say I just want to do it for Delhi circle only, or I want to do it for Karnataka. And within Karnataka, I would like to focus this offer promotion to a specific customer segment only. So Smart Invoice Pro gives uh, 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 an option at configurability or flexibility in terms of configuration where you can actually do a targeted promotions or targeted offers to your end customers. So uh, beyond this, uh, there are several ways to monetize here as well. 
I'm not connected to the internet, but you also can do a video marketing right from your PDF, where uh, you can play uh, a video marketing message right in your PDF. Smart Invoice Pro also produces uh, the consolidated bills. In a classic example of uh, service providers, uh, it has been a classic legacy issue where uh, you see the operators uh, operating through several system stacks. Let's say they are providing the mobile services, you have a different set of applications, different set of system stack. You have the broadband and fixed line services, you have a different system stack for the same version or a different set of applications. So as an end customer, I would receive or I would end up receiving two bills instead of one. So I have services subscribed from the one single service provider, I would end up receiving two bills. So why would the customer want this? So with Smart Invoice Pro, with our approach, we can consolidate the bills which are generated from two different applications or two different sources. That is one of the key advantages of using bill consolidation. Beyond this, the flexibility that we offer to the uh, end customer like for example, uh, uh, in countries like New Zealand, where predominantly people work on weekly wages, they want to manage their, their bills better. As an operator, I want bill consolidation to be done. However, as an end customer, I don't want my bills to be consolidated. So Smart Invoice Pro, it, it actually gives the power to the end customer where you can make the choice through our self-care microsites to actually overcome the consolidation which was enforced by the operator. And uh, the next way of uh, the communication of the bill is uh, a new way of communication called a video bill. <coughs> okay, so this is a video bill. I'm not able to play the voice here, uh, but a video bill which uh, explains the charges in the form of a video, where the format is still clear, you're actually not reading through your bill, you're actually seeing your bill. So this particular bill explains uh, very crystal clear detailed information where you say where are my charges and how, are my, how much charges are spent on broadband services, how many on mobile and how many on different uh, kinds of services. So it also gives you uh, a summary information and uh, annotated video where you can actually have the clicks right from your video which will uh, redirect to uh, uh, your payment gate results. And uh, the other innovation which uh, I was talking about is uh, integration to the voice-based assistance. So it would have been really good if it would have been, uh, I should have, is there a possibility we can play the voice? No? Okay. So what we have done is uh, with our microservices enabled architecture, we were able to integrate uh, our services, our bill services right to your Alexa device, Alexa and of course Google Home as well, where uh, you ask Alexa, what is your bill? It actually reads out uh, the current month balance. You can actually, we have actually built the whole conversation and brought the interactivity uh, with Alexa <coughs> as well. So we are currently working on uh, enabling the options for uh, uh, making the payment through Amazon Pay, uh, which is currently in progress. Okay, so uh, this is a new way of uh, presenting the bills again, uh, getting the bills connected right to your uh, uh, hall, right, right to your uh, living room, where you just talk to Alexa rather than going to the bill. You talk to Alexa and tell what's my bill, when is my due date, and how do I make a payment. That's right. So uh, this is uh, uh, a new way of, uh, again, communicating the bill. Yeah, that's okay. So 
we also have the uh, microsite, uh, the self-care microsite, which comes out of the box uh, from uh, the Smart Invoice Pro, where everything is service enabled. We have the bots uh, built into, uh, into Smart Invoice Pro, where customer can communicate about everything and anything related to the bill. So one of the other uh, invention is uh, the smart poking. The smart poking is uh, a new way of identifying the billing feed and producing the invoices. With the smart invoice, uh, uh, with smart poking in place, uh, we are able to process data up to four GP per minute, which is uh, the, probably the fastest in this world. Uh, we have successfully implemented the solution for battery HL across all the lines of business, and uh, we were able to successfully break down uh, the processing SLAs by uh, 70%. So uh, this is about uh, the smart poking. So it's uh, just a summary about various uh, various points that we have discussed. So we call the Smart Invoice Pro the smarter, faster, and the better product, which according to TM Forum uh, Digital Transformation Tracker Survey 2, so there are three key focus areas. How do we improve the customer experience? How do we improve the operational efficiency? And how do we uh, improve the new revenue streams, identify the new revenue streams? Okay, so Smart Invoice Pro is a digital product uh, which will help the service providers in their digital transformation journey. So I see the time's up. So. Is this system be adopted by any of the operators in India? It's adopted by Bharti mm -hmm. and uh, across all the lines of business. Mobile services, fixed line and broadband, mm -hmm. and enterprise services as well. In the present uh, scenario, okay. where many of the packs, they offer unlimited wires, unlimited <coughs> SMS, and unlimited data. Yes. So what can you tell me? Yeah. Then it becomes a redundant. <laughs> Uh, not not really, because uh, again, uh, when you come up with an unlimited option, it, it comes up with its own questions. Okay, again, uh, there are many packs where uh, you're actually saying it's limited, but it is has its own cutoff. Let's say, for example, uh, the infinity plan offered by Bharti HL. If you are looking at a 499 plan, you're actually not uh, giving an unlimited voice or unlimited uh, local and STD calls. It again has you can make local calls only and up to X number of minutes of STD. And again, with ISD in place, people would like to know what packs are being offered and where I'm actually making the ISD calls. And we have uh, seen a lot of requests coming in for the itemized calls, even though you know like uh, it's being zero rated, all the calls are actually zero rated, but you would like, as an end customer, I would like to still see where I'm spending more how much usage has been made to a particular number, to a particular usage type. <coughs> but has Airtel done a combined uh, billing for their fixed line and mobile services? I don't no. think so. No, no. not yet. It's, it's actually the planning in progress. They have a project uh, going on at the moment where uh, the consolidation of charges for both fixed line broadband and mobile services is in progress. They have not move to this stage yet. Okay, then they also have, uh, you know, uh, these 